It's Wednesday, August 26, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Love and Evil Come to the Party, and our scriptures, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who had previously had leprosy. While he was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw this. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, Why criticize this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She has poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, this woman's deed will be remembered and discussed. There are two distinct attendees to the party that stand out as the showcase of the gospel's message, love and evil. Let's take a look at both. Love is the first guest, and it expresses in worship and gratitude, which is natural for saved people. Notice the players, Simon, a leper who was healed by Jesus, and Mary, perhaps a former prostitute whom Jesus publicly rescued from those who would stone her. The woman anoints Jesus, having believed his prediction about the cross. It is as much an act of faith as honor. She gave an extravagant offering of her most prized position. In today's currency, she dumped about $40,000 worth of perfume on Jesus' head. What kind of Savior can prompt that kind of expression of love? When you consider where Mary and Simon had been, and the life they'd been given from Jesus, it's not hard to understand. Love prostrates itself in worship while evil presumes. We notice that Caiaphas, the high priest, was concerned about, quote-unquote, the people. Chapter 26, verse 5. He was really condescending, this guy. He knew that he knew better than anybody. He had an elitist attitude. Elitist attitudes are ugly, and they're particularly obscene when they show up in the church. You hear some pretty strange words out of elitist mouths. I can teach that class better. The church doesn't have to know about this. They wouldn't understand. So what if the Bible doesn't exactly say so? We want it this way. The presumption of evil is that it knows better than God. John's Gospel says that it was Judas who made the objection over Mary's wasteful extravagance. It's easy to bash old Judas. His name was like Hitler. You could say anything bad about him, and it wouldn't be bad enough. But Matthew, the streetwise tax collector, includes all the disciples. Why the discrepancy? Well, Matthew knew. It may have been Judas to say the words, but Matthew knew they were all thinking the same thing. Remember the depravity of human nature. We all have evil and are capable of being Judas. And the darker the evil gets around us, the more saved people can look with amazement and think, my God, that could be me. For you today, let evil presume you prostrate in worship. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road today. Have a blessed day.